my middle of the road color. I'm just washing it over this entire area very, very lightly. Uh, uh, by lightly, I mean a very thin layer of paint. I'm not, I'm not putting a big gob of it like on, on my palette here. It's a big bubble of paint. That will actually dry and have a <laughs> ring around it. So you want, you want your paint when you apply it with these washes to be super thin. So it looks like almost like you just licked it and it's wet. Um, you do this every once in a while while you're painting and it will, it will help create, uh, you can't see the pigments in there, but they're there and they start creating like a little, uh, like a, a blurred effect over the model and it'll actually create the effect of it being a perfect blend even though it's just, this paint never really blends, it just, you're just putting layers of paint over each other. Um, this will give you the effect of a, of a really smooth, creamy, buttery blend. And if you put enough layers of this, it will, it, it, it will look really good. Um, that's the way I get a lot of my blends really nice and, and, and smooth. And if they're not really nice and smooth, it's probably because I didn't do that stuff. <laughs> that's one of the things on contest miniatures that just takes a long time, is getting those blends super buttery smooth. Oftentimes, you can get the colors on the model fairly quickly. It's, it's, um, it's a matter of getting the, the blends really smooth and the, and the contrast and your highlights really, really good. So that's where all the time comes in. It's not so much just getting the paint on as it is getting the paint to look nice after you've added on. So. And the other thing is once I, once I get going, like sometimes, sometimes uh, getting the paint on over this airbrushing, it will start off a little bit slow because it, it, the paint's not doing what I want it to. But you'll get into a groove and you start, you start going and you'll sometimes find a color that's like the perfect go-between color between blends. And when you find that color, man, you finish everything. Because it will be a lot easier to do at that point and it's really hard to find that color. So um, it's like the magic color between, between your blends. Um, but you'll also find, like I started with my paint a little bit thinner um, when I first started because I didn't want there to be a visible like m lines between my colors but as you start getting brighter and brighter like up on the top here I'm starting to grab almost like undiluted, undiluted paint because I can get away with a brighter brush stroke and I want to build up that pigment even faster so even though it's like I haven't thinned that uh, silver gray at all I'm putting I'm putting a thin layer of thick paint on it. So I've got a lot of pigment in my brush, which will make my highlight nice and bright. But it won't, it's going on so thin <coughs> that it won't start making big lines mm -hmm. around. So that's where these highlights start getting a little more fun, when you can start getting the bright color popping in really quickly. Also, you'll find like a lot of people have problems with uh, chalky paint. In their highlights, um, that's usually due to too much water. So everyone keeps telling you, thin your paints, thin your paints, thin your paints. And I'm at a certain point, I start working the opposite way. Thicken your paint, thicken your <laughs> And that's why I don't want to thin all my paint that's on my wet palette. I want it to be, I want thin layers of paint of thick paint, basically. You can build up out of water that you're using. Well, that's one of the reasons I noticed the organicness. You use a lot of saliva in there. Yeah. So, uh, and, and the saliva just yeah. makes the... To me, you know, makes yeah. The so saliva is actually a natural paint repellent. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I didn't know this until, again, at another trade show. And, and this guy was telling me, and I was like, you know, you're right. You know, I, I had seen it happen before, but I never really put two and two together. But if you put paint down and you lick your brush just with no paint on it at all... Your saliva actually has this tendency to push the paint away because of the thickness of it. And so that's why you can do the, the technique where I said where you put the paint on and then push your brush into it and then pull it back. Because what, what pulls back is just a little bit of that paint and it'll come down in a, in a gradient almost. Um, again, it's a technique that you gotta, you got to work on. But uh, if you just watch what you're doing, it will, it will look really good. So you can see I'm starting to build up some, some highlight pocket areas that are much brighter, like right in there and right on the top here. 
much brighter than my original airbrush was. Going back to thickening your lines, did you thicken it with a, with a thicker pigment layer after layer or just one one thick line? Um, what do you mean? Well, you were saying that you build up, you layer the, the a solid, say a solid line. Right. Instead of just putting one solid line, you build up that solid line from layer to layer? Yeah, yeah, you can, um, uh, if, if, like, like on these, on this one, I'm at this point just painting the straight silver gray on, but I'm putting it on on several layers over and over again mm -hmm. to finally build it up to the point where it's either opaque or it's the color that I want it to look like in the end. Um, if I put it all on at once, I would have this big line around where I had that, where it went from purple to white, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, this way I can build up between the layers, but like I said, as I get to a certain point of brightness on the paint, I can actually start thickening or using the paint almost right out of the bottle. Um, or just with a minimal amount of water to just so it flows. Mm -hmm. um, instead of having a real ultra thin, like what I started with was pretty thinned out. It was probably about 50-50 water to paint mix. Mm -hmm. um, and that will, that will build up much slower than 100% opacity. I mean, it just, it just will. But you need to do that to get a smooth transition at the start. And it's those, those mid-tone colors that are always the hardest. And once you get into the highlight colors... Um, uh, well, for most people, highlights are really hard. But when I, when I finally realized that the final highlights, you want your, your thinned out paint not to be too thinned out. Um, and, then, and then suddenly they build up very quickly. And if, if you're smart about it, you won't, have any, you won't have any lines in your blend. So it will just be this perfect blend that goes up to a bright color. Um, <coughs> So you can see, like, in the video, I put a darker color down just at the base of this fold, and then I licked my brush off so there's barely any paint on it, and I just kind of massage that color back up into my mid-tone color. So then it has, it starts to get a, a shadow effect right there. And it looks like a, it looks like a smooth blend between the two colors, but it was just pretty much black put on it and then and then just kind of feathered it out with my brush. Um, the other cool thing about models like this, on, on a smooth model it's not as easy to do that technique. It can be done, but on a bumpy model you can get away with a lot actually. And so use that to your advantage. If even picking models to paint, sometimes a bumpier, more detailed model is easier to paint because um, you can break up those blends and you don't have this you don't have this long smooth blend that goes from the bottom of the back all the way up to the top that's really hard to do 